far as on the strip? Well, I think, number one, I think let's celebrate where we had a lot of successes. I know through the bid day process that went on throughout the week, uh, we had unbelievable participation and, and compliance with the mask order. And so I think that needs to be celebrated. I do think we all need to be a little bit disheartened by what we saw on the strip, especially considering what's at stake. I mean, the health care of our, our hospital, I mean, the ability to provide health care at our hospital, um, thousands of jobs that are related to the university itself, not only with football, just the university staying with a presence here um, and not just an online presence. We need a physical presence. Um, so we are working extremely hard. In fact, I just left a meeting with the university talking about what we can continue to do together to get voluntary compliance. Our law enforcement officers are doing an amazing job, and TPD in particular is stretched thin. Um, it, it, we are forced depleted and exhausted, um, mainly because COVID-19 uh, takes an impact on your own force. And any of our officers have had any contact with someone with COVID-19, and you can imagine that happens with more frequency within law enforcement. They're all. And so we're stretched, and we need, you know, I was asked, uh, you know, why is this, you know, does the city, doesn't the city have more important things to do? Absolutely we do. So it doesn't take a lot to wear your mask and to help not only protect yourself, protect your friends, protect your family members, it helps save jobs, it helps save our healthcare system. So we just encourage everyone to continue to try to do the right thing. Try writing the citations and arresting poor people, what message does that send to help you accomplish your goal? Well, I think it says we're gonna take this very seriously and we have been from the very beginning and we've been working jointly with, the, with UAPD and monitoring not only just activities we see on the strip, but also house parties. But I do think it's important to put this in context. Again, the vast majority of people and the vast majority of students are doing the right things. The images that get caught and then get circulated on social media, they, they, they're no doubt they're disheartening. But I don't think it's fair to say that all people or all students or the people of this community are not taking this seriously because we are. And I would also, we focus on football and certainly, I mean, that's, that's natural. Um, we know that when you look at the criteria for SEC not having a football game, that continued spread of the coronavirus or the stretching of your healthcare infrastructure are valid reasons why not to have football. That means we all play a part of this process, right? We, we all now have a role in whether we have our fault that we cherish here in Tuscaloosa. Now it's bigger than football, okay? The university is a $2 billion economic impact on our community. Um, but we all play a role in not only protecting ourselves, keeping DCH vibrant and active is, in, is our top priority, but then preserving our economy because there's thousands of people, thousands of people who are gonna pay their mortgage, they're gonna you know, pay their car payment, they're gonna try to pay their utility payment, they're gonna try to save for their children's education, that are counting on all of us to wear your mask as much as possible, to social distance as much as possible. And just like everything else in the world, there are gonna be times we forget. There's gonna be times we take it off. This is new to everyone. But what we're asking is do your best all the time in protecting yourself and others. And if we all do that, we will be, we will get through this sooner rather than later. Should the city have been writing citations and arresting some people if necessary before Sunday? Well. Um, we have been issuing citations before Sunday, so we haven't, to my knowledge, we haven't had any arrests before then. And certainly, you know, Sunday was a very uh, difficult day for uh, from a force level for, for us. We had had four straight days of, of, of officers working 16, 18 hour days. Uh, Saturday morning, we had a suspect die in custody. Um, Sunday, we got reports of threats against the Western Police Precinct, which mean we shift forces to better protect the precinct and the community. Um, we have to manage this city on top of managing COVID-19. And, you know, it's, we are doing our best to manage all of this. But again, I go back to, it's my responsibility, it's, it's, the, it's our citizens' responsibility to do everything possible to wear a mask, social distance, and that will help all of us get through. We will never enforce our way to solving this, never. So we just ask that people continue to do the right things. And, and again, I go back to my what I first set up here. Let's, let's also put this in context. The vast majority of people are doing the right thing. 
mean, the vast majority of people are doing the right thing. Our case numbers are lower, our hospital numbers are lower. I haven't seen that trend both simultaneously in months. So we're doing some good things. Let's make yesterday the exception and not the rule. What assistance do you need from the university? You said you just left a meeting with them a short time ago. We just, uh, we requested a, a couple of things. Number one, and by the way, the university has been an unbelievable partner to us in this process. Uh, we requested additional resources from UAPD. We've gotten that immediately. We're gonna be working with them on a communication strategy, and we're also gonna be working with the UA, reaching out to our bar owners and landlords as well. We need everyone's help. The city can't do this alone. UA can't do it alone. We've all got to approach this as a, as a team effort, and that's what we're trying to do. Now, have you had many of the photos that were circulating online yesterday were of you know, people standing outside the bars and businesses, outside of the property. Um, what can business owners, I guess, do? Because they say they're following the rules. They're not letting all these people in who are waiting outside. Well, and that's a good point. The business owners, a lot of times, they take the brunt of social media posts, and I certainly understand that. Um, and they're doing, but they're doing everything they're supposed to be doing. The issue, as you well described, is out on the city's right of way. We're going to hope, hopefully, we're going to we're going to begin coming out of the meeting. We're going to schedule a conference call with our bar owners and talk to them about what we can do to better ensure compliance on the city rights of way and sidewalk. As you know, especially in the strip area, that's a very confined space. And so we've got a lot of ideas, um, but it, it also, we need their help as well. I mean, the, the taxpayers provide that sidewalk and parking and everything else. So we think that they could help us too, the bar owners, because they actually may have more influence than say a police officer. Again, I am very, um, I am so uneasy about all of this, about putting our law enforcement officers in these confrontational situations. And we need voluntary compliance as much as possible. We are trying to save lives. We are trying to save this economy. And I know there's a lot of debate about COVID-19. And this has been heavily politicized. And there's a large number of people who believe that this is a hoax or this is not really a threat I ask all those people, I'm not asking you not to believe that, but what I'm asking you is put that aside right now. Because the standard that we're dealing with is that people are still looking at the number of cases in the hospitalizations. We know through science, wearing a mask, social distancing, doesn't necessarily eliminate your chance of getting it, but it brings it down even further. So put aside that, let's do the right things anyway, and then we'll be through this sooner rather than later. But to not do it as a, a sign of, you know, of, of, you know, I believe this is fake or I believe it's a hoax, you're only compounding the problems and quite frankly, you're gonna make this last longer. So I, I would ask everyone to put that aside and, and let's, let's get through this truly together as Americans. After reading your tweet yesterday, Walt, and obviously you're upset about what happened Sunday. Just again, your message to students, uh, adults, and everyone involved, you know, to do the right thing, you know, when it comes to social distancing? Well, my frustration was not necessarily, my frustration is um, because so many people have done so much, have sacrificed so much in this process. We have business owners who march, have been living on, on very thin lines, who have, who've had to sacrifice just so we could, you know, continue to flatten the curve. Uh, we've had uh, people, uh, you know, our team members here at the city, they're exhausted. Um, I imagine everybody who's in like DCH in the healthcare industry, they're exhausted. There's a lot of people who have done a lot of work to protect our community at this very critical time. And to see a very small portion of our population, and maybe not even our population, could be from out of town, probably, and you know, none of us, I don't know what the data. And by the way, not just young people. If you look at those pictures, it's not just young people. And I think it's easy to bash students, but I don't think that's fair because I, I think if you take a look at those pictures, you, you'll see that it's a, it's a cross section. Um, the frustration is, is that all this work we're putting in and we're this close, you know, we are so close to having some version of fall. Now it's not gonna be the fall we're used to, but we're gonna have some version of it if we can continue to do the good things. Let's don't throw away this opportunity. Now yesterday is not the end, we just need to make it the exception and not the rule. 
moving forward. I'm so proud of the people of this city. They have done so much. We're so close. Um, I just want us to finish the job. Mayor, knowing typically how things go on the Sunday of bid day, should there have been Tuscaloosa and UAPD officers in that area bef before the pictures started circulating there after? Uh, there were actually there were some officers in the area but for us we had to deal with the emergency in front of us and that was to provide added protection to the West Police Precinct. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times in this business you don't get the option of, of choosing A, B, and C. You have to choose one option and I believe TPD made the only decision you can make and that's to protect the health, that's protect our <laughs> officers and protect the community in which those officers were in. Um, so but once once that issue was resolved, we were able to then reallocate forces. And we also had a night town detail scheduled, so we went ahead and accelerated that one in as well. Was the threat to the Western Precinct, was this verbal, social media, or what was it? Um, it's under investigation, but I, 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 I think you're in the right direction. Has anyone been charged? Not to my knowledge. Can you explain the citation process, what it looks like, what those penalties look like? Um, the, the fines are actually set by, because we're right now under the Alabama Department of Public Health order. So I believe the first time citation is $500. Um, it's similar to getting a speeding ticket. Mm -hmm. And let me just borrow that speeding ticket analogy just for a second, because I think that's a good way of looking at this. Um, I don't know about any of you, but I imagine all of us have, or at one time or another, probably gone over the speed limit. And if you were in a 55 mile per hour zone and you were going 60, chances are probably nothing's gonna happen to you. Because most of the time, you're following the law or close enough that you're keeping everything safe. I know it's hard to wear a mask. And yesterday I was out at bid day and it was hot in a mask. Um, but if you can do it 90, 95% of the time, if you can practice social distancing, the more we do it, the more we are helping to protect our healthcare system and protecting the fall. So do the best you can all the time, and I guarantee you that we can make a difference. What I'm concerned about is those that just make the decision, I'm not doing anything. That's the hard part, because as you and I are developing this as a habit, we're gonna get better and better and better. But for those who choose not to, we're only prolonging this problem until there's a vaccine. Could you Maybe. see yourself recommending more restrictions if people continue just going out and not following you know, the rules and after seeing all the madness on yesterday. You never take anything off the table, but when looking at the reports of cases and hospitalizations, we're still in a very good place. The, um, the, the question we've got to ask ourselves is, what will we be seeing in two weeks? And so if we begin to have successive nights of this and successive problems of this, then yes, that certainly could change the dynamic. But at this time, I don't plan on um, Im implementing any additional um, restrictions. We can't restrict or enforce our way into getting people to do the right thing. Now we can help and we can move the process along, but there'll never be enough police officers to be able to do that solely. So we really need people to do the right thing. My goal this week is to, to um, have a conversation with our bar, bar owners, get their advice, because I, they all have an interest in getting this to work. We all need it to work so we have to fall. Mayor, what do you say to those bar owners and uh, employees who kind of just allow people to not wear the mask inside the bar? You know, maybe they're going to the restroom or, you know, not eating or drinking, but just literally just hanging out around the bar. What, what do you say to those bar owners? We need your help. And, and we know it's not easy. We, and we know sometimes that people can be, become, you know, very displeased if they're asked to wear a mask in an establishment. But, that is where we are. I mean, how many of us have ever lived through a pandemic? The answer is none of us. Um, and so we're really in a situation where we need everyone to do the hard things. But you know, I, I would say that wearing a mask is not the most pleasant thing in the world, but I wouldn't say it's hard either. And so just please continue to do the right things because unfortunately, especially for bar owners, bars and restaurants have really been the ones who have taken it on the chin during this whole COVID crisis. So the more that we're compliant, the more that we follow rules, the more we mitigate the spread of the coronavirus, which ultimately protects our healthcare system, the less likely we are to have any further restrictions. So it's, it's not only the right thing to do from a community standpoint, it's, it's probably a great act of self-preservation. Any other questions that are out there? I appreciate you guys.